OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. My name is Melinda Holt. I'm a PS2 technology integrator. I also manage all the trainings and workshops and webinars that you see uh, come up on the OTAN site. I'm a Google certified educator, trainer, cloud certified. They don't do that anymore, by the way, because Google's become workspace, not Google G Suites. Did you know that? Uh, and I'm leading edge certified and Google admin. So those two that are down at the bottom. I work for an entity called you guessed it, OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network, which is housed at SCOE, the Sacramento County Office of Education. So um, I've been here for 30 years um, working for SCOE. So you are here for engaging with the Googles. So I'm going to hopefully show you <clears throat> some ideas or some things that you can do in class or with your colleagues to engage them to because th this zoom stuff man <laughs> it's the bummer man i hate the zoom you know what i mean i want to see you i want to be next to you i want to hug you and i can't so the only way i can engage is doing something online um somebody mentioned in the chat that you know they have to be happy they have to be excited that's the main thing you should do as a teacher don't come to class oh my god here we go again because even though you're not saying that, that's coming across. That's coming across. So be aware of who, where you're at. Be centered. Be happy. At least fake it until you make it through the class, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, I want to show everybody this video. If you've been to any of my um, engagement presentations before, you've seen this. Bear with me because there might be somebody that hasn't. So I'm going to go in present mode so this actually plays a little better. And I'm going to make sure I'm sharing my sound. I am. So it starts out really soft, but then it gets loud. So fair warning. Here we go. I'm a student. This is my routine. Every morning, I get up. I make my way to school. I come here for an education. Seeking knowledge. This is what I find. Day after day. This is all I find. Day after day. This is what I find. If you wouldn't neglect me in a classroom with desks and a chalkboard, why would you do it to me in a classroom with a keyboard and a screen?
Am I paying tuition for a bunch of notes on a board? Education and teaching is more than a few reading assignments. It's time for a change. I've I've shown that video I don't know how many times and every time I get I get a little teary eyed and if you don't it might be time to change professions <laughs> I say that with kindness in my heart I really I truly do every teacher I've ever met that's ever watched this they go O M G and you, we all get a little torqued by read chapter five it's like what the heck is going on that person should know better right. So this is, we're online, we're online. So we have to engage our students. We have to engage our students. That video, by the way, was created by a student at a community college. Uh, and it was shared, first shared with me by uh, Christy Reyes. So Christy, if you're in the room, thank you. Because I've shown this video repeatedly. It is part of the handout, you'll have it. So if you wanna share it with your colleagues, you're more than welcome to. Um, I forgot to mention one thing. Um, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. You have a button down at the bottom of your screen called live transcript. And if you've been to other sessions, you you already know about it. But for those that don't, you can show the subtitles that might make it easier for you to hear me. Um, and I noticed that while the video was going, the transcript was running as well. So it actually read the video to me, which is really cool. So that's an engagement feature of Zoom that maybe would help your students when you're showing a video, you can close caption it, even though the video isn't being closed captioned. If you're using Zoom, live transcript is part of the educational account that we have right now. And um, they are going to be pushing it out to all free accounts. So if you're using a free account, it'll be pushed out to that as well. Coming up soon is what we're told. So let's, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Let's learn about engaging. And by, again, if you have any questions, I want you to interrupt, please. Okay. Um, first thing you need to do is know your Googles. All right. If you're using Google, you can't engage with Google unless you know the Google you're going to be using. Now, Google has a lot of stuff. It has a lot of stuff. And by the way, Google has just changed dramatically. Google is no longer an EDU. They don't call themselves that anymore. It's a Google workspace for education. So you might have noticed that the icons changed a little bit. We used to see drive as this green, yellow, blue. Now it's green, yellow, blue. It has a, it's a little red thing off to the side as well. All of the icons are, are uh, have changed to use the same color scheme. The Gmail is now using the, the red, yellow, green, blue uh, color scheme and the calendar all of the tools have gone to this new color screen. So, and that told us that some, some big change was coming. coming. Well, it did. Um, here's a really rough draft. I just thought this was interesting. Google started out as a search. That's all it was. And then it became Google and Gmail. And then it became Google, Gmail and Docs and Page Recreator. And they kept adding stuff to it and adding stuff to it until finally, just for a long time, we had G Suite's Enterprise for Education. Uh, which was a club account. It's where you signed in as a teacher and you got all of these cool and nifty tools. You had the same things when you were on your public account, your pub account. You had the same tools, most of the same tools, and some of them were uh, some difference. There are some differences between the club and pub account. Um, the workspace, basically the same, but you might be noticing some changes coming up, especially if you were on a G Suite, so Giuseppe, uh, at the educational uh, platform. So the what we're all used to is basically Google Workspace for education fundamentals. That isn't changing at all, but I want you to be aware that there could be some changes coming up on your teacher accounts if your network decides to go with the education standard or um, give the teaching and learning upgrade, which is going to do out in April, and then the education plus. So there's going to be different tiers of Google now. Um, if you don't see any changes, don't worry about it. But if you do see changes, you might be able to do more with your Google account as a teacher than what you thought. All right. So just be aware of that. Most of these changes aren't going to be uh, available until April. I got a little bit off topic, but you need to know the Google that you have. 
because there might be some functions that you have on your club or your teacher account that you don't have on your public account. So be aware of that. Know what your Googles are. In Docs, if you want to follow along, I'm going to show you some of this stuff. You'll be able to see it. All right. So now would be the time to go to View Options, Exit Full Screen, Minimize. I'm going to um, resize your Zoom window, kind of like what I'm doing now on the screen. I'm resizing my browser window. You're going to resize Zoom and then open up a Chrome window. So Google Docs. I mean, you can get you can get your students engaged. You can get your colleagues engaged. There are a lot of cool things that you can do in Google Docs, um, and, and people don't know about. And some people think it's really cool. If when you open up a new tab in Google, if you're signed into your Google, did you know this? You can just type docs.new, hit enter, and a new document will open up. You're already signed in. Google knows. Google knows you're signed in, and when you type docs.new, boom. So that's something you could show your students. They will think you're a magician that you know that. Okay? Um, I'm going to title this TDLS or SL. TDLS, there we go. So some things you can do here that might get your students engaged. Uh, to use a platform if, or an application. Uh, what, 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 oh, here we go. The headers. I'm going to type something here, All right? Chapter two. Now Google knows the word chapter, and it goes, "Oh, chapter one." Hmm. A uh, couple of words there. Uh, if I make it bold, something happens off to the side here. Something happens off to the side. I didn't bold chapter two. Nothing happened to that. Underneath chapter one, I'm going to put some spaces. And I'm going to don't follow this. Don't follow this. I'm just going to go out on the web somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, hang on. I got I got a, I got a doc that. <laughs> Why is it when you're in a hurry? Nothing works. There we go. Come. All right. So I'm going to get a doc here from my document. So don't do not do this. I'm just trying to get some text. So you could go to a website and grab some text. I want to be careful about the text that I have here. So I'm not sharing anything that could be um, objectionable or, or anything weird. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in the world. So I'm not going to the web. I'm going to just the document I have. So here's, here's some text, right? And you notice chapter one is still bolded. And it, Right here is chapter one, and, and here we go, is also over here now. Why? Because it's all caps. So I'm going to type here, we go, and we should see, oh, it disappeared. But why is chapter one there? Why isn't chapter two? I'm going to bold chapter two to show you. <gasps> now it becomes available off to the side. By the way, if you don't see the same thing when you type chapter one and chapter two, it might be because you see this little icon, show document outline. So that's the engagement part of this, the document outline. I'm gonna click that button and now I see chapter one and chapter two. I see them both because they're bold and Google recognizes those in line with itself. Bold must be important, must be something like a title right so if i have a lot of text between chapter one and chapter two how engaging is it or not when you tell a student okay i want you to read um uh chapter one and chapter two and they have already read chapter one where the heck is chapter two they have to scroll down all this text with oh oh there it is oh no wait oh right they've got to scroll up and down wouldn't it be much simpler if they could just click and it goes right to that point? So the document outline can be used like a table of contents. I want you to think about this beyond your students. Think about it with your colleagues. If you're doing any kind of, I'm just going to throw out a buzzword, a WASC report, right? And it's this really long document. Wouldn't it be so much easier to be able to click on the area you want to go to? Okay, you can do it different ways. Um, 
if I select a line of text and I make it a header. So right now I see normal text. I'm going to click on that and I can make something a title, a subtitle, a heading, uh, heading three, right? So I've selected a text in the document. I'm going to select one of these headers and then it appears in the document outline. Pretty cool. Use this as a table of contents. It makes it easier for your students. Making things easy on people keeps them engaged. If they have to work too hard at it, they, they, they forget about it. I'm not doing this. I can't find it. I can't find it. Make it easier for them so that they can find it. Something else you can do in Docs. Now, you might want to watch my screen and just um, don't do this. You're not going to be able to do this if you're muted. Okay, and you have to be you you would have to unmute in order to do what I'm about to show you next. So don't do this. Okay, you have to watch me. All right, I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to go to voice typing and Google Docs is going to recognize that I have a microphone and it says click here to speak. So I'm actually clicking on this little microphone that showed up on my screen. And I'm going to allow the microphone to be used. And as I speak, everything I say will be typed for me. I am not typing anything, folks, comma. And I'm also putting in punctuation, question mark. Yes, I'm putting in the punctuation incorrectly, exclamation point, but I'm not, I'm doing it with my voice. Huh? You can also, there are different key commands and it keeps doing it by the way, until you turn it off, which is what I'm gonna do now. So, it key, you, there are different uh, voice commands that you can use. This is really good for students because if Google doesn't recognize the word, it types something different. So how great would this be for your ESL students maybe to use it to see if they're pronouncing the words correctly? If Google types it correctly, it recognizes the word. So they must be pronouncing it correctly or at least close enough to where Google can hear it. Um, if they don't type that well, how great would it be if they could just voice what they want typed? It keeps them engaged. It's really cool too, because they'll go, okay, I'm going to say this, this, and this, right? And then they'll start saying all kinds of different things. So that's something that you can do with docs. Um, I'm going to go back to my list here. Are there any questions on that? Okay. Nobody's coming off mute. Remember, you have to voice and you're muted right now. I can't hear you or I can't read your lips. Okay, um, explore. If you wanna do this, if you wanna follow along, I am going to type the word. I'm gonna type my favorite vacation spot, Hawaii. I haven't been there in whew, about a year and a half now. <laughs> All right, so I've typed the word Hawaii. Now I'm going to, I'm gonna select it just for grins and giggles. I'm gonna go back to that tools and I'm gonna hit explore. And I get some options on my far right-hand side, right here, okay? Now you don't have to, it used to be in the past, you had to select the word that you wanted to quote unquote research or explore. Now all it does, it takes, it kind of finds the words that are in this document and goes, okay, there's a lot of these same words. So you wrote about this and you wrote about this. And here's some things that you wrote about. It's searching on the web. It's searching on the web right now. I have the word OTAN in this document. If I click what it gives me in the Explore tool, look at all of these links that come up. I can do research on my document without going on another new tab or opening up a new window, right? And then, uh, let's see, here's OTAN right here. If I want to cite this site, if you're looking at my screen, as you hover over the links that appeared in the explore tool on the far right hand side as you hover over a link you'll see little quote marks appear and then as you hover over those quote marks you'll see cite as footnote i'm going to click that and then a little one a little tiny one appears next to the word where i had my cursor blinking and at the bottom of the document lo and behold there is a footnote right there whoops there's a footnote right there Okay, if I put another footnote, and I, I'm going to put my cursor at the end of Hawaii, 
um, on my explore tool, which is still open, instead of outreach and technical assistance network, I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to type the words Hawaii. Again, I'm not leaving the document. I'm making it easier on my students and my colleagues. I'm showing them, hey, you can do research right on the document. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find another site to site. Boom, there's a number two and another footnote. If I get rid of the first footnote, number two becomes number one. Okay, so this is a really cool tool. If you're doing any research, you want to use footnotes, or if you're even teaching your students how to use footnotes, use the Google Docs. It's really easy, and that keeps them engaged, right? We want to make, we don't want to make things too easy, but we want to make it easy enough uh, so that they can work it, so they can work with it. Uh, you can also, with Google Docs, you can put in page breaks now and section breaks. And actually, this has been around for a couple of years. But um, on the page, let's see, we're going to insert and you can insert page numbers. OK, you can also insert page breaks. So if I want a page break right after, here we go. Get rid of that. I'm going to insert a break and I want it to be a page break. There it is. OK, so that's been there here for a couple of years, but I had I was having a conversation with a teacher. I think it was last week and she went, <gasps> You can do that in Google? I'm like, yeah, you've been able to do that for a while. So that's something that might keep things, keep your colleagues engaged, for, for instance. And it also, when you're printing it, when you're printing it, it will keep that page break for you. So uh, that helps with page numbers. Again, if you're using this all together with the outline or the document outline, boom, you've got a workable document. You can click on things. You can go directly to a specific spot. It's really, really Cool. I keep using the word cool, but I, I love the word cool. Um, collaboration. I'm going to show you a, a quick and easy way to share with anybody. Share with anybody. You're going to click the share button on your document. You're going to look down at the bottom of your page and you're going to see, oh, it's changed to anyone with the link. Right now it's restricted. So if you didn't know this, and if you're a Googler, you do know this is not a big thing, um, but you can change this from restricted to anyone with the link. And then you copy the link and you send that to people. Do they have to have a Google in order to open the document? No, not if they use Chrome. They can paste that link into Chrome and it will open up in a view for them. They'll be able to see it, okay? While we're here, OK, I want them to see it and they do have a Google, but I don't want them to make a copy. This is something I want stuck in time. I don't want them to mess with it. I don't want them to edit. So if you give them a view link, they can't edit, but I don't want them to make a copy either, because if they make a copy, that's going to be like version two. And then I update my version, but their version doesn't update because they made a copy. Right. So I'm going to stop them from making a copy. I'm going to click on this little gear right here. When After you click the share button, there's a gear in the top right-hand corner. You're going to click that. And right here are two checkboxes that most people don't know about. You can deselect viewers and commenters can see option to download, print, and copy. Once you take that away, they cannot copy it. They cannot download it. They cannot print it. They have to ask for permission in order to do that. So this keeps your document. If you're, if you're still making revisions on it and what have you, it keeps them from copying a version that's not finished. All right. There's nothing worse than being a student and you've got, you know, you made a copy of the document and then the teacher says, oh, there's a new version. Okay. I got to make another copy. Oh, there's a new version. Oh God, I'm going to make another copy. Don't let them make a copy. Just have them come to this document with the viewable link. They always have the updated version, right? All right. So that's the share example. I'm going to hit done here. By the way, that works with sheets and slides as well. Sheets, slides, and docs, the sharing is exactly the same. And Jam Jamboard, a little hiccup there, sorry. All righty, we're gonna move on. Um, templates, I didn't, didn't show you templates. So that was on a document. Every Google file type has templates. Docs, sheets, slides, forms. Docs, sheets, slides, forms. Docs, sheets, slides, and forms. So if we went to docs.google.com, and most of you know this, when you go to docs.google.com, you've got templates up at the top. Uh, if you have, if you're signed into your teacher account, your club account, your EDU account, whatever you want to call it, 
you might not see every all the templates that I see. Uh, go ahead and select template gallery. And if you have something up at the top of your screen that says uh, your your education account, actually, let, let me let me go to my education account and I can show show it to you. Hang on, just a sec. Here we go. I'm going to switch accounts. Oh, I'm not signed in. Oh, when did that happen? Hang on. Remember, ask questions. I have a question about templates after you finish. Go ahead, ask now. No, it's about a Google Classroom template because when Ew. I put when I put a document in Google Classroom and then I put it in a second classroom, it, for some reason the document becomes a template. Uh, yeah, you've got. <laughs> You're using an EDU. So um, tell you what, that's a little complicated. Okay. So we have uh, uh, the networking lounge during mm -hmm. lunch and um, after the, the conference today, come to that and I can, I can explain that to you, okay? okay All right, so I went into my club account um, and if you see your club, I'm gonna say your, your district name, it, this is usually where your templates open. OK, and my district county office of education has no template, so I see nothing. OK, so but right here I see a general tab. So when you click there, you see all the public um, templates and they've got a lot of good ones here, folks. Um, why have your students or your colleagues reinvent the wheel if the wheel's already there for them? All they have to do is scroll down and look at the different templates. You've got business letters here. You've got letters. If you have your students practicing writing a letter, have them start with a template. When they do that, as soon as you click on one, it's yours. It doesn't belong to Google anymore. It's going to be put into your Google Drive. So you click on it. You wait for the magic. Boom, there's a letter. I can rename it now. I can change all of this information. It's mine. And notice it's not shared any with anybody, so it is mine. So templates is a really cool thing, um, really cool thing to use for your students. So we've done that. We've done, oh, the viewable link. We've already gone over that. By the way, on the viewable link, let me go back to, here we go. Um, everyone go to your share button. If you're on a document, everyone go to your share button uh, and then copy the, the viewable link. Humor me, copy the viewable link and then hit done. Okay, now on your document, I want you to paste. I want you to paste, control V. When you hit copy the link, it actually copied it onto your clipboard. Every Google document that you share will end with edit question mark USP equals sharing. I am about to make life so much easier for you and your students. So every link ends with this, right? What you're gonna do, I'm gonna actually gonna copy this again so that you can see the original and what I'm gonna be doing. Get rid of all this text, here we go. So I'm gonna paste. So here's the original link. Now I'm gonna take this edit question mark USP equals sharing and I'm gonna type the words preview. I'm gonna take out edit question mark USP equals sharing and put preview. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that link because I'm gonna what 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 does that do? I'm gonna open up a new tab. I'm gonna paste it, and then I'm gonna hit enter, and this is what your students will see. They don't see view, they don't see file, they don't see edit, they don't see nothing. All they see is the document. If I had links in this document, I would, I'd put them in here. And when they click on them, they'll work. They'll take them to wherever I want them to go. Boom, simple, preview. The other thing that you can type at the end of, instead of edit question mark USP sharing, you can, once you copy that link, you're gonna take out that, those words and you're gonna type copy instead of preview. Well, what does that do? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna copy that link. I'm going to paste it into my browser. 
And it says this. So as a student or as a colleague, if I want them to have a copy, their very own, that they can do whatever they want with, if I want them to have a copy, I don't have to tell them, okay, everybody, I want you to go to the file menu. I want you to find where it says make a copy in the list. I want you to click, right? You don't have to do any of that. Just give them the link so that when they make a copy, they'll be asked, are you sure you want to make a copy of this? It's going to go to your Google Drive. Just tell them to say yes. They got it. It's there. Okay. So we got the viewable link. We went to the share button and got the viewable link. Melinda, we, I have a yes. question. Can sure. we do this on Google Form as well? No. Okay. Only no. the doc. Google Form is, yeah, Google Form will be uh, uh, shared as preview only anyway. <laughs> Google okay. Form is its own different sharing um, thing. Okay. okay. Yes. It. Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Drawings if you've used drawings before. So those four file types, you can do that. And actually, if in my drive, I have a PDF, I can get the shareable link for the PDF and I can put preview at the end of it. And they will only be able to see the PDF or see the Word document. Yes, you can share Word documents in your drive. Whatever I put in my Google Drive, I can share with others, except forms. Um, and use this link, use this preview link or copy link. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Cool. All right. So that, that's in the handout. And yes, I'm going to be giving you the handout at the end. Uh, we've kind of already gone over the explore and the site. I want everyone, we're going to have some fun right now. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to find, where did I put that? Oh man, where's my form? I want everyone to make sure you are here we go. You exit out of um, the view screen. If you don't want to, if you just want to watch, that's fine. But what I want you to do, I'm going to put this link in the chat. Okay. I am going to get you engaged right now. We're going to have some fun. So I'm putting a link in the chat. And for those of you that just want to watch, I'm going to, I'm going to do it too. Okay. Uh, using forms is a great way to get students engaged. Now, you have to think out of the box, folks. Don't use forms as a, as a collection data tool. Use it as a game. Use it as a game. Use it as a tutorial. Use it as a tutorial. Um, and I'll show you what, what I mean. So I'm going to put my name and my email address. There we go. I'm going to go to the next button. And now, oh, look at that. I got a video to watch. Thank you, teacher. I can watch a video. And not only that, but I have questions on the video. So you have to watch the video in order to get that fill in the blank word, right? Now, I already know what the word is. <laughs> so I don't have to watch the video. <laughs> but if you click the play button. OTAN supports adult educators integrating technology into the classroom. OTAN and depending on what sentence you decide or, you know, you could have several sentences here to fill in the blank with the video right up at the top. The answer, by the way, for those of you that um, don't want to watch the video is free. So, yes, OTAN offers free professional development. So I, I type the word free. If I type the word correctly, it'll let me go. Now I'm at a password. So all of you I know are stuck. You can't go any further until you get the password. So this is also something you can do with forms. I could have made this the first thing that you saw. So think about that. I can make a quiz online. And if you don't know the password, then you're not getting in. Okay. So the password, by the way, is OTAN, all uppercase, all uppercase. Go ahead and try to, um, and I'll do it. I'm going to type all lowercase and see what happens. Hit next. Oh, nope. Okay. What about O T A N? Capital O T, capital small A N? Oh, nope. So you have to know what the password is. You can make the password anything you want as the person that's creating the form. And next, this is done with that data validation. So for those of you Googlers that, oh man, how did you do that? Google has validation for. Um, questions. So you can actually tell the question, I want it to be exactly this. 
And I told it I want it to be exactly OTAN. Um, do you need to be signed into Google in order to view a shared document? I've already given you the answer to this question. We had a class. I told you the answer. Do you remember the answer? You do not need to be signed into Google in order to, which one of these would you select? Tony. Uh oh, Tony's probably already finished. <laughs> All right, we won't wait for Tony. Uh, Mimi, how about you? View a shared doc. View a shared doc. There we go. Next. Now, let me go back real quick. Oh, it took me all the way back. All right. I bad. I should have known that. Hang on. So if you um, had typed the wrong answer, would it let you go on? Because you can set the question up to where it doesn't let you go on. So this is form escape. You have to know the right answers in order to move on to the next section. All right, um, here's the password, all uppercase. And if I had selected view a shared doc to make a copy, now we all know that's the wrong answer, but I'm getting it wrong on purpose. I'm gonna hit the next button and it goes, oops, try this one again. Well, the heck with that, I'm just gonna go to next. Does it matter? because I've set the form up to go back to the question, <laughs> okay? And it saved my answer for me, so I know that one's wrong. Um, if I get it, you know, the next question, that's wrong too. Takes me back to, oops, try this one again. So I hit the back button and I get the right answer. Now I can move on. Now I get a different question. All of this is based on sections. So the form has different sections in it. And based on the answer, it's going to section five or section six whatever I have set it up to be. Slides cannot be used to, now we haven't gone over this, and if you don't know the answer, I'm about to give it to you. Slides cannot be used to create spreadsheets. Yes, you can create PDFs with slides and you can create presentations, you already knew that, and you can create if and then, okay? Um, but for the other options B, do you need to be signed in for students to make a copy or edit it? Oh, I just looked at the chat and I, I think we moved on. Yeah, we are. Okay. Uh, so create spreadsheets. That's, a, that's the right answer. So I'm moving on. Um, and then it took me, hey, you got it. Yay, great work. So give them some encouragement. Um, slides and docs can contain videos. Slides and docs can contain videos. Is that true or false? It says, and you cannot put videos in documents. You cannot put videos in documents. So the answer is actually false. But if I put true, because I thought, yeah, sure, no, yeah. <gasps> I missed that one. I have to go back. So you see how this is working. It's kind of a game for the students. Um, can forms be password protected? Didn't you have to just type OTAN? Yeah. So forms can be protected to a, to a point. And then to win, to win the question or to win this escape, um, it says to win, submit this form, then be the first to type the fake word from the list below. If you think, if you don't think there is a fake word, type all real into the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm follow the directions. I'm gonna hit submit, and I already see that somebody somebody has typed the correct wrong word. Audrey, you got it. Proank. And um, Dessa, pronk is actually a word. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> pronk is actually a word. On a form, you can also give people the rights or the ability to submit another answer. Uh, most of you that are Googlers know that. So if I wanted them to, hey, you know, you want to do it again? Go ahead. But I didn't want you to do it again. But you got engaged, didn't you? You're looking, oh, man, is that the right answer? Proank, for those of you that are getting to the end of the form, yes, proank is not a word. Uh, but Pronk is, look it up, <laughs> all right. Um, you can also use forms to turn in assignments. So uh, Google Forms allows you to uh, allow students to upload photos, to upload um, uh, Word docs, any file that you want. Uh, you can actually specify the file type. So I'm gonna go to forms real quick. I'm just going to open up. Here's the forms escape. No, it's not. It's in here somewhere. I'm not going to look for it. I'm just going to. Um, oh, yeah. Here it is. 
it is there. I'm going to go way down at the bottom. I'm going to um, add a question that you're not going to see because I'm not going to publish it. Where did my chat go? Here we go. Here we go. So I've added a question. And right here, oh, what'd they do with it? Here we go. We want to select file upload. OK, so from the toolbar on the form, we're going to select it, it, it defaults to multiple choice. So I'm going to cancel that so you can see it again. So here's my question. Instead of multiple choice or any one of these, I'm going to do go to file upload right there. And then it gives me this disclaimer, you know, make sure you know what you're doing here and hit continue. And then I can specify uh, the file type. I only want images, or I only want audio files because they're creating MP4s for me, or I only want a PDF. So you get to decide what file type, or you just turn this off and that allows all file types. You can also um, uh, limit how many files they can upload. Just keep it at one to be safe. Keep it at one, <laughs> okay? And then the maximum file size. If they're creating a video, if, if your colleagues or students are creating videos, you probably want to give them at least a gig. Um, will this take away from your space on Google Drive? Yes. So be aware of that because they're, they're attaching it. They're uploading it to the form and the form is residing in your drive and that's where the files are going to go. Okay. So you can, you can actually have your students upload their assignments. Alrighty, so we did forms. I kind of went out of order because slides, you can do so many engagement activities in slides. Uh, there's lots of stuff here. Uh, shout out to Elisa Takuchi. She's the one that showed me how to create a virtual classroom. So she uses Bitmoji. Bitmoji is an, uh, an extension that you can add to Chrome. And when you do that, I'm going to I got to move chat over so I can find my little Bitmoji. Here we go, right here. So here's my Bitmoji extension on my Chrome. I'm gonna click that. And I, okay, I need to sign in. <laughs> so you sign in, you actually attach it with your, um, your Google account. I'm gonna hope I remember the password for this one. Uh, Nope, that's not right. Hang on just a sec. Any questions? <laughs> oh, I hope this is right. Ah, I'm logged in. Okay, good. So now uh, when you have Bitmoji as an extension on your Chrome, you get all your Bitmojis right here, right? And you can right click and choose copy image from the menu. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna copy the image and then I'm gonna go to my slides and I'm going to paste. And there's my Bitmoji. So I can actually give this or put this on my slide or I can give it to my student when they've done a good job. I can put this in a document. I can put this in a slide. I can put this in a Gmail. I can do all of those things because it's an extension on my Chrome. And I just saw a question come up in the chat. I'm gonna try and find my chat here. If students upload videos to a Google form, is there a way to let students see each other's videos? There is, um, Jennifer. What you would do is you would have a folder where you put all of those videos in. Right. And then you're going to share the folder with your students as viewers. So you get the shareable link to the folder so that when they open the folder, they can then open the video. You could also share the specific video. You get the you know, right click on the video as it appears in your drive and then um, copy the shareable link. OK, so, yes, you can do that. There's lots of different ways. You could also create a site and then link to those videos and they all appear on the site that we don't have to worry about them clicking on tabs and, and getting all messed up of where to go. We don't want our students to get lost. When we get our students lost, they leave, they don't come back. So back to Bitmoji, here's, a, um, here's that classroom 
and today's lesson is coffee. Um, and I put on here, I think it's still live, a file, an audio file, the history of coffee. The origin of coffee as a drink or a plant dates back to the middle of the 15th century. In the I was really tired when I read that, but it's actually this story right here on another site. So if they click the storyboard, they will see this story and they can read it themselves or they can use the slide to have it read to them. Now, as a teacher, I would definitely make this image bigger for them so that they could see it to read it. I made it small so that you could see what it looks like in a quote unquote Bitmoji classroom. Um, here's another day, maybe day two of the class. Uh, we have a spelling week and notice my Bitmoji, you know, is uh, we're health. It's a health topic. So <laughs> I changed the Bitmoji to be more health related. Um, Elisa has on her Bitmoji classroom, she has herself, her Bitmoji doing a lot of different things in different poses and what have you as she's going about her classroom. I thought it was really cool. And, and it, during her presentation, I was actually making Bitmoji classroom. So a lot of different things that you can do with this. Um, we'll try and get Elisa back on the OTAN, uh, OTAN train so she can do another workshop maybe on this, but this is also, it's already been archived and it's on the OTAN website, uh, creating a Bitmoji classroom. Yes. The background is not Bitmoji, is it? The desk and the chalkboard? The desk I actually created using Google Draw tools. Okay. The background um, is mine. I created that because I didn't like that. That's actually a picture of a classroom. I didn't like all those bricks. So I used it as a template and, and put in my own walls. So I thought a little bit outside of the box. You can actually on Google Slides, and this is coming up, but I'll show it now. On Google Slides, there are add-ons where you can use images and unsplash images. We're gonna, I'm gonna click on that is an add-on that I use to search for classroom or empty classroom. Uh, and then, if you insert it, you can put pictures on top of this, right? You could actually crop this and make this chalkboard bigger and put your lesson right there. So you need to think out of the box a little bit, get a little creative. You guys are all, you're, you're teachers, you're inherently creative. <laughs> it's in your blood, man, <laughs> all right? So get creative. Um, another thing that you could do is the if then. So on slides, you can tell a slide that, okay, we're on slide uh, 20 or 21. I can make this box, I can make it a link that goes back to slide one. I can select text and make that go to slide 12. I can make this slides that go any which way I want, right? Just by creating links. To do it, and most people don't know this, when you select an image, I'm going to select this box right here. Uh, you hit Control K or you use the link tool up at the top of slides. Okay. And right here, the special little link slides in this presentation. I can have it go to any slide I want. So I'm going to go to, I'm picking slide five and I'm going to apply. Now, this box is a link. So that when a student is using it, if I've given them view rights and I tell them click on the number seven box, they know where to click and it takes them right to slide five. Okay, I use this, um, the linking tool in slides to create books. Um, I'm gonna show you one real quick. E book, here we go. I just did a presentation on accounts and safety, and this is a book with a table of contents. Each one of these lines of text is a link that goes to a specific page in this book. This link right here goes to slide 26. Boom, there it is. They don't have to guess where they're going. They don't have to scroll through the slide deck in order to get somewhere. And there's a TOC button and on every page that when they click on it as a student, it'll take them back to the table of contents. So all kinds of different ideas here to keep them in 
the in, in the the learning mode um th this one if you at, if you stay to the end which is coming up here real soon um you will get this uh slides game board um we're going to see how it works and this template you can you will have you'll be able to view, make a copy of this this is a jeopardy a game board that somebody created and there are 60 something 57 slides here okay here's we all know jeopardy right so we've got state caps illinois acronyms topic four topic five T topic four and topic five aren't going to work because I, I didn't want to mess up the slide deck too much so annette i see you looking so i want you to pick state caps illinois or acronyms section you have to unmute Illinois for one. Illinois <laughs> for one. Okay, so we're going to click that. Boom. <laughs> the answer is CST. What's the question? <laughs> you probably don't know. And that's okay because we have this click to answer button right here. And there's the answer. What's the time zone for Illinois? CST. <laughs> All right, if I want to return back to Jeopardy. Here's the game board. We're right back. So state caps for 100. Here we go. The answer is Dover. Anybody? What's the an What's the question? What's the capital of Delaware? Exactly. Yes. And just to make sure that you're right, and then I'm not wrong. There it is. Okay. So you get this game board as part of this presentation. Um, something else. Some some other ideas. You can have your students. You know. Um, you can read to them. Okay. Uh, Marisol. Uh, what's going to be the first word in this sentence? Marisol, going once? Yes, going I'm to... here. Okay, I'm what's here. the first word? What's the first word? There, there. There? Okay. What's the next word? Um, is, but it's not there. It's not there, so it, it then, so then, it's, <laughs> then, then there might not be the first word. All right. No, no, that's not the first word. God, am I stupid? I know. I know you're not stupid. <laughs> so what you word. would do is see, but Who I'm getting the box there. Do you guys see how engaged Marisol is? So store I think, the. I gotta go. I'm sorry. Too much fun. I gotta go to that's class. That's okay. Bye. So um, one one drawback to using this as a, a template for an activity is that they are shapes and they have words within the shapes. Um, I personally don't like doing this because when students click inside the shape, they can actually edit the word and I don't want them to do that. Or I don't want to get, oh God, you know, uh, I can't move it because my cursor is blinking in the word. So my um, suggestion would be to use something called word art. So when you go to the insert box, or the insert tool, you go to word art and you get this little thing that appears and I can change, there we go, right? So word art is just, it's a depiction of text and then you can change it. Um, so I might have a student say, okay, make this an equation using these numbers. You have to use at least uh, one of these operators and you have to use the not equal sign. Okay, okay, so here we go. Not equal uh, seven uh, plus nine uh, does not equal uh, two, since it's right here. Okay, so any math teachers here? This is a true statement. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Um, you could also create storyboards. So Barry does this, Barry Bakin does this with uh, Microsoft, uh, with PowerPoint. You can do it with Google too. So uh, just get some pictures and maybe have a student say, hey, what, what would be a good um, uh, title or a good thought for Marjorie to be having here? <laughs> okay, make it fun, make it fun. Uh, we've already done the forms, Jamboard. I don't have enough time to do this. As a matter of fact, I think I'm out of time. When are we supposed to end? Anybody? It's right now, isn't it? Noon. Oh, noon? <gasps> noon. Noon. You're fine, Melinda. <laughs> I got a half an hour. You still got a half an hour. Yeah, good, good. Thank you, thank you. Okay, see, I'm excited. Now I'm engaged. Okay, so Jamboard. Um, by a show of chat, I have the chat open. How many of you know Jamboard? It's just yes or no. If you know Jamboard, say yes. If you don't, say no. Oh, I see a lot of yeses. A few no's. This is cool. This is cool. All right. Jamboard is a physical thing that uses uh, 
this application that I'm using right now. Okay, it's a physical thing. It's it's uh, it's what we used to call Promethean smart board. It's a smart board. Okay, Google has a jam board that you can touch and move things around and everything. All right, and it uses an application called Google Jamboard. You don't have to have that physical thing in order to use Jamboard. All you have to do is sign into your account, go to jamboard.google.com, and you can create a jam. So in the bottom right-hand corner of my screen, I see this little plus symbol. I'm gonna click it. And if I'm having a meeting with my colleagues, uh, I would, share this with them. I'm not going to do that yet, but I will in a minute. But then people can add notes to the jam. Jam, 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 jam. There we go. And save. And there we go. And then I can, we can move these notes all over the place. And then you, we've all been to meetings where you've got post-it notes on this big piece of paper, or you walk around the room and the, you know you put the green dot where you want the the most important thing or whatever, use this instead. Don't waste paper. All right. And how many times have we lost all those little sticky notes? It's like, oh my God, there goes my meeting down the tubes, right? <laughs> After you create a jam uh, and people use it, you can save the frame. This is the frame right here uh, as an image. You can download the entire thing as a PDF can download it as a PDF and then you can distribute it or you can make the PDF after you save it as a PDF you can grab the text out of it you know how many times have we had to take all those little post-it notes and type every little thing that the post-it note said onto a document that we needed to share with somebody right so you can do all kinds of things with jams after you uh, you share them out now you do have to share them in order for people to use them so what we want to do is um, we want to get the shareable link, but instead of as a viewer, we want to change this to editor because I want you to be able to write on this jam. So I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to hit done. Just like sharing a Word file or a document or anything, uh, I'm going to paste the link. Now, normally I would have made that a bitly, make it really short and cute. Um, but there's a link in the chat. If you click on it, Anonymous Dolphin has joined. Uh, you, can, you can add a sticky note by clicking on the little sticky note tool. You could uh, pin something. You could write on the Jamboard. You can erase something that you have created or that others have created, so be careful. You can also change the color or the, the I'm sorry, the shape. You can add shapes. You can add images, okay? And because you're an editor, you can add frames. So everyone stop, stop, take your hands off your mouse. Take your hands off your mouse. I, 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 I know who you are because I can see you drawing. Look at the top of the Jamboard. Look at the top. It says create frame. There's a little arrow, right? So you could click that. Okay, now think of this um, as part of a workshop that you're doing with your colleagues or even with your students. I want students one, two, and three to be on the first frame. I want students three, four, and five, or five, four, five, and six to be on the second frame, and so on. Right? You can you can specify who goes to what frame. Uh, that way, you get. Or I want all of the ESL teachers to to talk or put post-it notes on frame five. Okay, so you go to frame five and you start doing your stuff. I want all the ABE teachers to start posting on ideas on how to engage on frame three, okay? So as you're, um, as an editor, you have the rights to make frames. I think you can have up to uh, 20 frames on the free account, which is what this is. And it's really easy to use, isn't it? It's really easy to use. There's also a fill color up at the top. So we can make this page a different color. Um, or I'm sorry, your shape's a different color. There we go. <laughs> You can make the, the page a different color too. It's just a different way. So look at all you guys having fun. Melinda, there's a yes. question. There's do a you, question. Do yes. you know why some students can't access Jamboard? And yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Um, it, it has to do with accounts. 
okay? It has to do with accounts. It might also have to do with browsers. If your students are using Chrome, uh, they should be able to open it, okay? If, your student, if you have only shared with your agency, let's say you've got a club account, your EDU will have a Jamboard. This is on the pub, so anybody, I've, I've allowed anybody to view it. When I go to my share button, if everyone can stop stop jamming for a minute <laughs> and look at the, the Zoom screen, um, where you see Git link, um, normally uh, on a club account, it is restricted to your agency. It'll say restricted to Sacramento County Office of Education or restricted to LAUSD. So what you would do is you would change that, not only um, take off restricted, but you'll have that option. Um, the first option is restricted to your agency. There we go. The second option is just restricted to people that you enter by email address. And then the third option is anyone with the link. And this is what you want to select, OK? When you're on a pub, when you're on a uh, free account, you only have two options. When you're on a club, when you're on an EDU, your teacher account, whatever you want to call it, you have three options. So it will restrict to your club. So if your students are signed into their club and they can get to the jam because it's restricted to the club, but they're signed in, so it's okay. If your students haven't signed into the club, then no, they won't be able to get to it. So this is the magic right here. It's anyone with the link. Now, if, you, if you're not able to select that, some networks don't allow it, uh, just, just make sure you tell your students, okay, everybody, make sure you're signed into your Google account. Okay, I hope that answered the question. I have a question with that though. If, so if you're on sure. a pub one mm -hmm. and you do that, do, do the people have to have a Google account or is it just anyone who can use Chrome can go into it? It should be anyone um, because the, the Google is, well, you know what? That's a really good question. Hang on, Let, let's find out. I don't know the answer to that. I've never had that question before. So I'm gonna copy this link. Let's find out right Would now. Would you repeat, repeat the question, please? He's asking if a student um, is trying to get to the Jamboard and is not signed into their account, can they still use the Jamboard? And there's your answer. So I just opened Safari on my, um, on my computer. I am not signed in. But I know that because I see the sign in button. I'm going to try and put in a sticky note typed by someone not on Google and hit save. Do you see that on the jam? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So do your students need to be signed in? No. Isn't that cool? I just learned something new. <laughs> Very cool. Um, you can save this jam for later. You can turn off the shares like, okay, everybody. All right. All right, we're, we're winding down or it's the end of class, right? So I can, what I giveth, I can take it away. So I could change the link to no one, to restricted. And then that kind of sets it in time. And then I might want to copy uh, or make a, make, a, um, make a print of it, a PDF, um, you know, whatever you want to do. And then you can reset everything and, and start all over again tomorrow or you can have as many jams as you want, all right? So when you go to jamboard.google.com, see, I, I just created this one. I could have many, many, many jams on here, okay? If anybody shared a jam with me, then they would also appear. Um, they don't actually put these in the drive. It's, it's kind of off to the side. So you can look at, you know, whether or not you see, uh, if anyone's shared with you, if I click right now, not owned by me, I'm not going to, oh, I am seeing one. This is not owned by me, Jamboard and Webinar, okay? Or owned just by me, there we go. So you can select how you see that, um, kind of similar to Drive. Does it show who has posted or is it anonymous? It will be anonymous if you just share the, the, the link as a view. If you copy the view link, otherwise, here we go, I can share this with specific people. So if I have a list of, of my students, 
I can um, add them and then only they will be able to jam on the jam board. And then I will see, okay, Cheryl Young has made these um, changes um, or input something and I'll see their names up here if they're actually on the jam at the same time I am. So right now all I see is anonymous anteater, armadillo, your aurochs, beaver, plus 12 more. So here's a list. If you had been signed in and if I shared with you directly, then I would see your names here on the jam. Okay. Anonymous Wolverine has joined. Woohoo. So you guys have fun on the jam. <laughs> All right. I um, have a um, question about because you when you went to slides, you did an add-on. So what's the difference between a Google add-on and a Google extension? Okay. An extension is inherent, is known to be on Chrome, okay? An extension could be an app that opens up. It extends the capability of Chrome. An add-on is something that's in the app. You're adding functionality in the app. It doesn't follow you to, I'm, I'm sorry, into the app file. There we go. So on this app file, this engage with Google's file that I'm showing now, I have the add-on Unsplash images. If I insert a photo, it will only appear on this file, right? If I go to another slide, it won't be there. Whereas on Chrome, the I have all kinds of Chrome uh, extensions here. No matter what device I sign into, if I sign into my Chrome account, these same extensions appear across the board. Yes, they also appear, <laughs> add-ons also appear when I sign into my slides. I'll always see unsplashed um, photos. Um, but extensions are known to be on Chrome. Add-ons are known to be on Docs, Sheets, and Slides. Is there really a lot of difference between the two? It depends on the app or the extension or the add-on or the extension. Some add-ons only work within the file that you're opening. Okay. It's not a separate entity. Um, Grackle is an add-on that's actually a separate entity on Google Slides and Docs. It will check the accessibility of the slides. So it's actually using like a third-party software to come into your slide to check it for accessibility. Whereas the add-on Unsplash, you have access to their entire uh, library of photos and you're taking an image from their library and you're placing it on your slide and then it's yours. It, it's not like it's staying there. Okay. Uh, Docs has add-ons. Um, I'm trying to think. Docs, Sheets, and Slice. Sheets is, uh, eh, eh. they're just getting a few add-ons now. They didn't, they're just starting, but Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms has some add-ons. I would not use them if I were you. They're not really good. Okay. Uh, there, there's some that sound like really, really cool things. Like after you have appointments made and as appointments are taken off of the form, they disappear. Only sometimes that doesn't always work. <laughs> so just be aware that not all add-ons are created equally and not all add-ons and extensions are created by Google. They're created by third-party software entities. Uh, Nine times out of 10, there's 9.9 .9 times out of 10. They're safe, they're good, don't worry about it. You're gonna hit that one that's like, oh my God, this does not do what it says it was gonna do. Just get rid of it, just get rid of it. You can manage your add-ons and your extensions. So I, I kind of rambled a little bit, but I think I answered that question. They're kind of the same, but not. Extensions are on Chrome, add-ons are on your Google apps, doc sheet slides, sometimes forms. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. I know I rambled a little bit. Um, what do we get? What else? What else do I want to show? Jamboard badges. Oh, how many of you would love to use badges? Have you thought about making your own badges? You're going to get a badge right now. Yes, you are. Before just for attending this workshop, I created a badge and I even put micro credentials on it. So, what I did was I opened up a drawing. I'm actually gonna to go to my drive so I can find this thing. Uh, I created it last night, I had this idea. Drive.google.com, there we go. So I went to drive, I opened up a new drawing and I called it badge. I have no idea where it went. 
because again, it was late last, yeah, engage badge, here we go. <laughs> it was late last night, went, oh, this cool idea. So here's a badge, okay? Now, this badge has credentials. They're not very good credentials and I wouldn't share with anybody if I were you, <laughs> but this is a badge. Now, our students and even we love badges. You get your badges when you walk so far, right? You share, hey, I got my, my made 500 miles badge, right? We love badges for whatever reason, we love badges. So you can create your own. I use Google, the Google Draw tool to create this badge. I gave it some credentials. I am going to share it with the viewable link. So I'm copying the link now and I'm gonna put that in the chat. You now will have a badge that says you would, oops, that just went to one person. Sorry about that. <laughs> Any minute now. There we go. You now have a badge that says you earned this by attending engaging with Googles. Uh, you tried your bit emoji but can't log into Chrome. For some reason, it doesn't recognize my email. Do I need it? Okay, on the bit emoji, you have to create it using your tablet or your phone first. Okay, so open your phone, install the Bitmoji app, sign, you know, use your, your email and, and, um, and you have to create a, a password. All right, so, and then you set up your Bitmoji, you, you give it a clothes and, and what have you, hairstyle. And then you come and you install the extension on your Chrome. Okay, and it will ask you, okay, what account, what Bitmoji account do you wanna use? That's what I was doing right at the beginning. And I signed on in with the same account that I have my Bitmoji on my phone. All right, so you have to do the Bitmoji first on your phone, and then you sign into that account, uh, same account using uh, the Chrome extension. Okay, uh, back to badging. Um, think about this is at the end of the year, the student gets uh, or has completed a coursework, um, give them a badge. Give them a badge, bless it. You know, this badge was earned by doing these things and they now have a certificate that says this. The badge they can put on their resume. They can, they can, they could actually link to this if you gave this to them, if you made them the editor and then transferred ownership over to them, it's theirs. They can do whatever they want with it. And they can put it on their resume or they can share it with prospective employers saying, look, look at all the badges I got from my teacher or from my program. Um, we get badges. I got badges for being a Google trainer, right? All they did was send me an image and it has some credentials behind it. The credentials aren't behind this one. They're right off to the side. You know, you could, you can, you could have this, this image right here link to a Google document that the students can't touch, right? And then when whoever the student shares the badge with says, hey, look, employer this is this is all the things i had to do um, where do they keep their badges in a folder on their google drive they don't have to um, invest in any software or anything google's free and yes there are uh, was credly is a badge creation and curation tool there's lots of curation tools this is a simple very I hate to use the word dumbed down, but very simple way of creating a badge for your students, okay? Instead of investing in software. Now, if you invest in software, you get lots of cool little features. Uh, and, and if you're not too artistic, you know, you might want to do that. <laughs> you, you want your badge to engage. You don't want it to look like a square box with a number one on it. Um, you know, you, you, you want to keep people engaged and that you want them to want the badge. Okay, so and again, this was a, an idea last night. Well, they have badges, uh, sheets. You can do a lot of stuff with sheets. This is more to keep you engaged. Um, I've had lots of conversations with teachers. They hate sheets. Well, I'm going to use the form that you just filled out. I'm going to find it first. And I'm going to show you how cool this is going to be. So are there templates for badges? No. There are no templates. You have to create your own. Sorry. Uh, we can come up with some ideas if you want, Beth. I, I, can, I can give you some ideas on that. Um, right here, here are all the responses. All the responses that you put in the form, they went into a sheet, okay? 
Um, people have told me, I don't like Sheets because it can't do this and it can't do that. And it's not like Microsoft. You're right. It's not like Microsoft, but it can do things. I'm going to insert a column where it says name. Okay. So I see um, all everybody's name. Some of you just typed your, your first name. That's fine. But I want you, I'm going to insert one more column. Oops. Let's try that again. Insert left and insert left. There we go. So I want, I want some space here so you can see what's happening. I am going to select this column of entries. Okay. Maybe I want to sort this by last name. I can't do that the way this is uh, formatted right now. I should have thought of that before I did the form. Too late. But I can do something now to split these first name, last names without having to copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. All I have to do is go to data. After I select the column, I go to data. And this really cool tool right here, split text to columns. And it's going to it's going to give me some options. So right now it's detecting automatically. What is it going to detect? It's detecting a space, a period, semicolon. If I wanted it to, I could have it detect the, the right or the left parents, right? Parentheses, have it detect the left or the right. If you have something in parentheses, you just want the data to be split up. You can decide what it is. Right now, I just space, boom. Now I have first name, last name. It's done. Um, let's do that again. Five minutes, Melinda. Okay, thank you. I'm going to insert left uh, and insert left again. I like having lots of space so you can see stuff. You don't have to insert twice. Uh, that being said, if we had anybody here with the name uh, De La Vega, De La Vega, three parts to the last name. If you split text to columns, and you didn't have enough empty columns, it would have erased the text to the right. <laughs> so be aware of that. Um, right here, I'm going to select this column, uh, the email address. I'm going to go to data again. I'm going to split. And I'm going to tell it to go to custom. I'm going to search by at symbol. And there we have their user ID separated from their domain. Ta-da! So split text is a really cool way to manipulate the data. Uh, I'm looking at my slide here to figure out what else I can do. In this blank column, maybe I want to see or check who um, entered their last name and who did not. How do, I, how do I make that like a statement where I can see right away who's done it and who hasn't? I'm going to put in checkboxes. <gasps> what? You can put in checkboxes? Absolutely. So you're gonna to go to insert and the options I have here, look at all this stuff that I can add. I could add a chart, an image, a drawing, a form, a function, insert link, all kinds of cool stuff. And yes, a checkbox. There's checkboxes. I'm gonna copy those all the way down. And now I can see, oh, Diogenes, Jonathan, Annette, Mimi, Louis, Meisner. So all of these people that have a checkbox next to the name actually input their last name. Isn't that cool? Yes. Something else, you, very simple conditional formatting. What if I wanted this to pop out at me? I want it to be loud and proud. You can do conditional formatting. So let's say that you want to see all of the people or all of the answers. You want the ones that said create PDF files. You want those to stand out. So I'm going to select the column. I could select the whole sheet if I wanted to. The conditional formatting can get really, really complicated, but can also be very simple. So I'm going to select this column. I'm going to go to format, conditional formatting. And here, it's applying a rule right off the bat. It's saying, okay, if the cell's not empty, then you want it green, right? No, I want to format if the cell contains, and then I have to put in a value, Create, yes, I'm going to share my slides. Create PDF files. Okay, and done. So now when I look at this, I know it, it's really simple. I, I've got the, um, the, the cells being colored for me, so I know exactly what the answer is that pops out. Create PDF files. There's three of them. 
How simple is that? You can also have it count that way too. Okay. <sighs> this worksheet tips. If you want to work more with um, sheets, this will walk you through some things that you can do with Google Sheets. And boom, here is the link to this handout right here. So if you made it to the end, um, yep, I'm ending. <laughs> um, it's 11.59. Woo. Linda never ends on time. There you go. There's the, the, the handout. So uh, I see all of you. Look at this. All of you are coming on. Woo. So you can, uh, I made this viewable so that you can make a copy if you want it. Um, the videos on there, the links that I clicked on while I was here, they will work for you as well. Uh, this, oh, where's that? Yeah, this I added. So yeah, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> All right. I hope you learned some stuff. I hope you were engaged. And I hope you learned how to get your students a little more engaged maybe.